Hello everybody. I hope that your day is going well. Uh, today is flying by and actually really this week as I'm recording my uh, how to stop the whining e-course. It just makes my day fly by. It makes it really fun and I'm super excited to get that out to you guys um, really hopefully by the end of the month and um, help to ease some pain that I know a lot of you parents are facing. But today we are going to be talking about follow through. And this was actually a request from somebody that um, I was more than happy to take them up on. So if you ever have any requests of something that you'd like me to chat about in a live video, feel free to send it my way. You can post on my wall, you can send me a message. I'm more than happy to make um, and take some requests. So today is a request from somebody and we are going to talk about follow through. And you know, there's a lot of directions that I could go in with this, but we are going to talk about is it really important as well as what to do when you don't follow through. Because let's be honest, we are all human life happens and we don't always get to follow through on the things that we want to do. So thank you for those of you who are joining in live. It's really good to see you all. And um, for those who are catching the replay on this, thank you so much. And just in case people are sharing this video and you don't know who I am, my name is Jillian. I'm a licensed clinical professional counselor and my business Flying the Wall Counseling provides online services for parents who are looking for some additional support in managing their children's behavior. So we all know kiddos have tough behavior and one key factor in getting your child to actually change their behavior is to be as consistent as possible and to follow through. Follow through with what you say you are going to do. So we are going to chat about that because it really is important. And I think this is something that most parents know. I mean, basically every single client that I work with has said something at some point like, I know I just really need to be consistent. I know I just need to do what I say I'm going to do. And, um, and that's great. But I'm really big on the why. Why is it so important to follow through? What is at stake if you don't? And of course, people have an awareness of like, well, I want to be a person on my word. Um, if I don't do what I say I'm going to do, my, my kid won't take me seriously. And so they'll probably just, you know, do keep doing the bad behavior that they're going to do. Um, I don't want to let my child down. Those are some things that parents are definitely aware of. And that's the immediate context or the immediate consequence of not following through. But there also are some long-term um, ramifications of not following through as well. And that is because your child, uh, your relationship with your child is so sacred. It's so different than any other relationship that they have. You are the person that they believe they are supposed to be able to trust the most. And so if a child can't trust mom or a child can't trust dad, it is very, very likely for them to develop trust issues with people in general. Because if they can't trust mom and dad, the people who are supposed to love them the most, the people who are supposed to really be there for them, if you can't trust those people, then who can you trust? There's nobody else who cares more for a child than their own parents, and they know that that's how it's supposed to work. And so if they can't trust their parents, they're likely going to have difficulties in forming tr uh, relationships that have strong amounts of trust. And while we want our children always to be cautious and to make sure that they are putting their trust in the right type of people, we definitely want them to be able to learn to trust people. That's something that's very important and to learn how to trust people. And so that is uh, one of the natural consequences of not following through with saying what you say you're going to do. Now, of course, life happens and we'll talk about in a little bit what to do if things fall through and you're not able to follow through and how to make up for that. But 
just know that as much as possible, try to follow through. I cannot tell you how many times in my previous um, jobs that I have met with children and they'd say like, well, my mom said that I was going to do this, but it's not really going to happen. So, um, you know, what's, uh, what's even the point of trying? Um, you can take away their zeal to even try. Um, they don't want to be let down. It could be something super exciting and if there's been an issue with follow through in the past, it makes them completely unmotivated to try and do something that's good, to do something that you would like them to do because they just feel like it's going to be wasted effort and they'd rather not meet let down. Maybe it's not even that they mind doing the good behavior. They might feel totally fine about doing the good behavior or even motivated to do that. But the thought of having that disappointment at the end um, is just too painful. So they'd rather just skip that and not even pursue what you're suggesting for them. So you can strip them of their motivation as well. So those are some long-term, bigger picture consequences that can come from not following through with your child on top of the things that you guys are probably already very aware of, of you know, feeling like you're not a person who keeps their word, um, them not actually changing their behavior and, and whatnot. It, it can be much bigger than that and have different ramifications. And if you're not building that trust early on and following through when they're little, if that basic level of trust is not built, then when they get older, they're going to be less likely to come to you to open up about life's difficulties, to seek advice from you, to want to be fully open and transparent with you. They're going to be holding things back. And I know that you all want your kids to come to you in those trying teenage and tween years um, when life is just hard and there's so many temptations that life throws at them and you, know, you want them to be able to learn how to trust people and, and who to trust and not be seeking for um, you know, approval and, and connection elsewhere. So those are some of the reasons why it's so important to be able to follow through Beyond the fact that, you know, if you don't follow through, it's going to have some incident ramifications on their behavior and, and not going to change their behavior. So, um, so there is that. But let's move on to the next part of this. Um, and what do you do when you can't follow through? So something comes up, you know, sometimes really tragic things come up, things that are very common in life. And, um, you know, that are just, they stop things and it's hard for a child to understand the weight of those things and why they interfere with life and why you can't follow through. Or maybe you have other kids and something comes up and it makes it really hard for you to follow through on a consequence. So if you're not able to follow through, you are absolutely allowed to admit that you messed up. I always encourage parents to admit to their children when they mess up. It is okay for them to know you are not perfect. It is okay for them to learn from you that when you mess up, you own up to it and you apologize. What a powerful message for them to learn from you. So even when you can't follow through, there can still be an amazing moment with your child where you are building your relationship with them and teaching them a very valuable lesson even if you weren't able to follow through on what you said you were going to do. Um, this can seriously build your relationship to new levels um, and let them see like, hey, mom's not perfect so uh, I can relate to her a little bit more. Um, this can seriously be transformative. So if you can't follow through, absolutely apologize. Have that conversation with your child um, and then step back and think about, okay, you know, was that consequence or was that reward or, or whatever you were not able to follow through on, was that realistic? And is this something that I can in the future most likely follow through on or is it something that I really won't be able to follow through on most of the time? and just need to push it aside and find a new solution. Because it could be a really great idea. It could be that this is something that you have great intentions for, but you're just not able to follow through at this time. 
Um, for example, I have clients who have really, really little kids. And so some behavioral interventions just don't work at this time because they have another kiddo on their hip. So it may be that you need to come up with some alternative behavioral interventions to get through a certain season of life so you can make sure to follow through and not miss out on that opportunity. So apologize and then review what's going on to see if you need to tweak or change what's going on to make sure that you don't continue to not follow through and, and have that awkward situation where you're feeling bad and guilty about not being able to do it. Let's problem solve and figure that out. So if you feel like you need help with this, uh, of course you can always reach out to me. You can send me a private message um, or we can set up some time to chat. I always give out free consultations, so feel free to do that. If you know of a parent that this would really encourage them or help them in their parenting journey, feel free to share the video, pass it on, help me in my mission to reach more parents and restore peace to their hearts and their homes. You all have a great day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.